The scandal engulfing Penn State University. The accusations of repeated sexual assaults on children by a coach there have shocked the country. Today, President Obama expressed his outrage. Now, in an exclusive interview, the mother of a boy who says he was sexually abused by coach Jerry Sandusky speaks out for the first time. Her story is gut-wrenching for all parents, especially those whose kids play sports, boys, as well as girls. Lindsay Davis reports. Thousands gathered tonight to remember the victims. A candlelight vigil on the steps of Penn State's old main building marked the end of a stunning week. First, the shocking arrest of former defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky, and then the firing of legendary head coach Joe Paterno. We want Joe! We want Joe! We All the upheaval and riots that shook the campus have threatened to overshadow the eight young sexual assault victims at the heart of the case against Sandusky. Oh, I'm infuriated. I'm infuriated that nobody that nobody told me you know, what was going on. This is the mother of the little boy whose allegations started this whole thing. She spoke for the first time on Good Morning America. For her protection and her son's, her face has been hidden and her voice altered. He was angry about something. We didn't know what. I went to the school counselors and, you know, and it was basically, they said a puberty thing. At points he was starting to get violent, um, intentionally getting grounded. According to grand jury documents, Sandusky allegedly began taking victim number one to football games and gave him golf clubs, a computer, and clothes as gifts. Eventually, Sandusky allegedly sexually assaulted the young boy repeatedly during sleepovers at his house. It's different from a typical abuse story, maybe in how prominent the abuser is. Nevertheless, the outlines of the case are all too typical. Ariel Zwang runs a sexual abuse crisis center and says one in six boys are sexually abused before the age of 18, 90 percent of them by someone they know, a relative, a teacher, a coach. A coach can be a very trusted and revered authority figure in a child's life. Athletic attainment can be what causes a child to blossom, can get them access to a college education. So the coach can be in a position of enormous power with a child. It begins with the abuser grooming his potential victim. With a boy, we're talking about sports. It may be special attention in the coaching process, maybe special um, opportunities to see the coach outside of the confines of the normal coaching relationship. It might even be special favors um, in terms of how much playing time someone might get. And many of them don't speak up about it. The most common emotion that a child may feel uh, when thinking about disclosing abuse is shame. They often feel that it's their fault, that somehow they're responsible, and often the abuser will capitalize on this and, and help the child to feel that it is their fault, that they are responsible. Theo Fleury was a National Hockey League star who says it happened to him. From the time I was 14 to the time I was 17 years old, I uh, was molested probably about 150 times by my coach. Fleury was a junior hockey player in Canada with his sights set on the NHL when his coach sexually abused him. 400 miles away from home, you know, he, he was, this guy was everything to me. He was my dad, he was my mom, he was paying for everything for me. He basically at that point had convinced me that the only way that I was going to make it to the NHL was through him and, and being with him. And like many other abuse victims, he kept what happened to himself. You just don't have the faculty uh, to be able to, to deal with it. Plus, who am I going to talk to? I have nobody to talk to. You know, if I blow the whistle on this guy, will I be branded this troublemaker or this guy that blew the whistle or, you know, am I gay? After years of drug and alcohol abuse, Fleury has now found healing in trying to help prevent other children from being abused. No, the coach driving your kid home after practices. If the coach uh, starts to pay particular attention to your kid or if you see this guy is paying more attention to one little guy as opposed to everybody else on the team, that's a telltale sign that that kid's getting groomed to get abused. Zwang echoes that advice and says parents can look for additional warning signs. A child may uh, who normally slept well and 
was carefree now seems not to be sleeping well, not to be eating properly. Older children may engage in risky behavior, things that they didn't do before, where they don't seem to care about themselves as much as, th as they used to. And most importantly, kids and adults alike should always report abuse, a sentiment the president echoed tonight. We all have a responsibility. We can't leave it to a system. We can't leave it to somebody else. Each of us have to take upon ourselves to make sure that our kids uh, have the love and support and protection that they deserve. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in State College, Pennsylvania.